to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, August 22nd, 2013, and I'm your host, Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, was the chemical weapons attack in Syria a setup? And a surprise twist in the Bradley Manning trial, or should I say, Chelsea Manning? Then, Jakari Jackson sits down with Kale Sampson, info rapper battling the New World Order. All this and more on the Info Wars Nightly News. Tonight's top story. Experts are questioning the validity of that footage of the chemical weapons attack victims in Syria. Uh, there are, within some of the videos, examples which seem a little uh, hyper real um, and uh, almost as if they've been set up. Uh, which is not to say that they, they are fake, but it does cause some uh, concern. Uh, some of the people with foaming, the foam seems to be too white, too pure, um, and not consistent with the sort of internal injury you might expect to see, which you'd expect to be bloodier or yellower. His suspicions are shared by a Swedish diplomat and former UN weapons inspector who said it would be very peculiar if it was the government to do this at the exact moment the international inspectors come into the country. At the least, it wouldn't be very clever. A chemical weapons expert who is leading the current UN inspection in Syria said that the high number of those killed and wounded sounded suspicious. But was the chemical weapons attack a provocation planned in advance? Earlier this year, we reported on a supposedly hacked email from a defense contractor exposing a plan that was approved by Washington. Uh, they planned to stage a chemical weapons attack in Syria and then blame it on Assad. The allegations spring from a series of online posts by a blogger purporting to reveal that the company had been offered large amounts of money to recruit Russian-speaking mercenaries who could detonate a chemical weapon inside Syria. The post also suggests that such a plot would have the approval of the USA. It was later claimed that the email was a hoax perpetuated by the Syrian Electronic Army. Another curious timing issue with the chemical weapons attack was that it occurred precisely one year after Obama's red line remarks. And even Russia is voicing skepticism, saying a flood of reports issued by biased regional media about alleged chemical weapons use might be a provocation planned in advance. It draws attention to the fact that biased regional media have immediately, as if on command, begun an aggressive information attack, laying all the responsibility on the government. Now, I don't know who to believe is responsible for this attack, but one thing I can say is that video is not a hoax. I have personally seen a dead body before, and those people are dead. I know that when you die, the blood pools, and you can see it right there in the video, several other bodies where the blood has started to pool, not to mention the fact you cannot get a toddler or many toddlers to play dead for that long. That video is really disturbing, and it's very sad, and I don't think it's a hoax. Uh, we just don't know who actually released the gases. But nevertheless, this attack has Twitter, blowing up. People are fighting amongst themselves. Who did it? To whom? And why? What I want to know is, was that chemical weapons email real? Where's Guccifer? We need Guccifer to release some more emails. Is it Guccifer? Like Lucifer? Or is it Guccifer with the, with the two C's? Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Illuminati angle and call him Guccifer. So, Guccifer, email me if I'm not pronouncing your, your name right. I want to be on your email list anyway. That actually brings me to the daily quote. This little thing called the Internet and the ability of people everywhere to communicate instantaneously and to have more information coming at them in one day than most people can process in months or a year, it makes it much harder to govern. Yes, indeedy, it is John Kerry, and we are counting on it. We're counting on the Internet to help us wake up the rest of the sleeping giant to remind them that the government is for the people, by the people. Well, one person who wasn't so easy for the authorities to govern was Michael Hastings. He reported fearlessly on some very powerful people, and it cost him his life. The coroner's statement on Michael Hastings' death has been released, and the official cause is auto versus fixed object or tree. The cliché of cars bursting into flames in a collision is a Hollywood myth. Under what condition will a car crash and burn? 
The key to a car explosion is a bursting fuel tank. The LAPD claims that the car exploded on a frontal impact without bursting the gas tank. To put it mildly, that is highly improbable. It appears from surveillance footage that there were multiple explosions very close to each other which would match the initial eyewitness account. In a breaking story today, LA Weekly reports that Joanna Thigpen, a friend and neighbor of Michael Hastings, he came to believe his Mercedes was being tampered with. Nothing I could say could console him, said Thigpen. One night in June, he came to her apartment after midnight and urgently asked her to borrow her Volvo. He said he was afraid to drive his own car. She declined, telling him her car was having mechanical problems. She said he was scared and he wanted to leave town. It isn't just that bombs can be planted on cars. Speed, steering, and virtually every aspect of a modern car is under software control, and software can be hacked. You can do some really highly destructive things now through hacking a car. And who would be likely to hack a car or to do a cyber attack? As Aaron Schwartz pointed out, They are funding the creation of vulnerabilities. They are offering rewards for people to find and build vulnerabilities into their system and give it to the U.S. government so then the U.S. government can launch cyber attacks. The physical evidence hasn't supported the government's story from day one. The government had the motive, the means, and the method to kill by either car bomb or by cyber attack. But don't expect the government to investigate itself. See the full special report at Prison Planet TV or the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. And again, that full report can be seen at Prison Planet TV or it'll be uploaded soon to the Alex Jones YouTube channel. Now, I wonder when all the evidence surfaces in the Michael Hastings death, if they're going to use the justifiable homicide defense like they do here in Austin. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. We have a story out of the city of Austin. Austin man sues APD for traffic stop shooting. On May 8th of this year, James Barton says an APD officer fired a shot at him recklessly. An officer stopped Barton for improperly traveling through an intersection. He turned on his lights, Barton said. I pulled over, reached for my wallet, and opened the door. I was getting out when a bullet came flying past my head. He missed. Now, this isn't the only officer-involved shooting currently under investigation in the city of Austin. Last month, unarmed, Larry Eugene Jackson Jr. was shot in the back of the neck after he allegedly attempted to commit a fraud at a local bank. Even though the shooting of Jackson is still under investigation, APD was quick to charge Jackson with committing a fraud without presenting any public evidence. Now, it's my understanding that the gentleman has some type of false identification. Can you specify what that is? Again, due to the ongoing nature of the investigation, there are some pieces that we're not releasing. Since that time, Detective Kleinart, who actually shot Jackson, said in a private forum he did so accidentally. On the flip side, the Texas Attorney General has already deemed this a justifiable homicide. Nadia Stewart is the lawyer defending the detective involved in a shooting last month. She's also married to an Austin police officer. Stewart says in a meeting last week, Chief Acevedo told her to alert her husband he would be investigated by internal affairs for leaking information. Stewart works for CLEAT, the legal group that represents officers. She immediately complained to the city manager's office. Mark Ott and the city attorney responded to her, saying in this letter, We agree the chief's comments to Ms. Stewart during that meeting were inappropriate and unacceptable. The police chief admits that he made the statement, but claims that he was joking. So for a police force who shoots at unarmed motorists, shows up to the wrong address and shoots your dog, and also wears ski masks in the commission of their duties, hopefully this can be a step towards transparency. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. Stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up the complete police state collection. Four films of documented tyranny. Reports like that are crazy because just a few years ago, taxpayers spent a whole lot of money making sure that all the police in the APD were given taser guns. That way they would use their taser guns as a first resort rather than their regular guns. But now we constantly have these stories of cops who choose to use their guns first. So here they don't even know how to, how or when to discharge their weapons. And we're arming them with military grade equipment and tanks. And we're just crossing our fingers and hoping that they will behave themselves when they roll these out to the streets. Right. Well, the big twist in the Bradley Manning trial. Bradley Manning reveals that he plans to live his life as a woman and he wants to begin hormone therapy as soon as possible. I am Chelsea Manning. I am female, the Army private wrote in a bombshell letter one day after his sentence 
to 35 years in prison. Given the way that I feel and have felt since childhood, I want to begin hormone therapy as soon as possible. I hope that you will support me in this transition. I also request that starting today, you refer to me by my new name and use the feminine pronoun. The letter signed Chelsea E. Manning included a previously leaked photo of him donning a blonde wig, lipstick, and eyeshadow in 2010. Now, transgender prisoners in the U.S. who have not had genital surgery are usually assigned to live with inmates who share their sex at birth. A Fort Leavenworth spokesperson told the news agency that treatment for transgender inmates does not extend beyond psychiatric care at the all-male prison. The Army does not provide hormone therapy or sex reassignment surgery for gender identity disorder. Now, I personally respect a person's decision with regards to their gender identification. I don't think that we should be attacking individual people when the conspiracy goes so much higher up the chain. That's why they're spiking all of our food with hormones and killing us with GMOs and stuff because they know that it is affecting everyone. They're basically restructuring our DNA and changing, changing us all to be really kind of submissive. So we shouldn't be attacking Chelsea Manning. But what I am curious is if Manning's revelation is going to cause Obama, who is, you know, always trying to buddy up to the LGBT community, if Manning's revelations will finally cause him to call Manning brave and a hero for revealing her secrets. And there's another trial highlighting government lies and corruption. The Department of Justice asks the court to grant immunity to George W. Bush for the Iraq War. In court papers filed this week, the U.S. DOJ requested that George W. Bush, Richard Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, and Paul Wolfowitz be granted procedural immunity in a case alleging that they planned and waged the Iraq War in violation of international law. The lawsuit alleges that they began planning the Iraq War in 1998 through their involvement with a nonprofit that advocated for the military overthrow of Saddam Hussein. Once they came to power, the suit alleges they convinced other Bush officials to invade Iraq by using 9-11 as an excuse to mislead and scare the American public into supporting a war. And finally, the U.S. failed to obtain U.N. approval prior to the invasion, rendering the invasion illegal and an act of impermissible aggression. Well, that sounds legit. But the DOJ claims that in planning and waging the Iraq War, ex-President Bush and key members of his administration were acting within the legitimate scope of their employment, and thus immune from suit. Well, apparently it's the Westfall Act certification that permits the Attorney General, at his or her discretion, to substitute the United States as the defendant and essentially grant absolute immunity to government employees for actions taken within the scope of their employment. Granting the Bush administration immunity from war crimes would be a crime in itself, but unless the American people get up off their butts and demand a trial, they might not even ever need to request immunity. Now, a really awful but great movie that was released this week uh, shed some light on the sickening mind of some other gangster war criminals who managed to kill between a half and two million people more than 50 years ago during Mao's China. The military coup and bloodshed going on in Egypt is bad, but in Indonesia, 50 years ago, there was a military coup and subsequent repression that resulted in the death of between half a million and two million people. In Bali alone, 5% of the population was killed, but it wasn't talked about much in the U.S. The Vietnam War was getting most of the headlines, and the CIA was assisting Indonesian military coup leaders in rounding up communists or anybody that they didn't like and wanted to label as a communist. An amazing documentary film has just been released, The Act of Killing. Although it's about those events, it's not a history of those events. It's not even a history of government killing millions of people. It's the confession and the discussion of the act of killing by the imbecile thugs who actually murdered thousands of people personally. It's a chilling and disturbing glimpse into the mind of self-described gangsters who repeat over and over again that the term gangsters actually means free men. Yeah, in their view, they're free to do whatever they wish, including rape, torture, and murder. 
And you can see how they intimidate, blackmail, and rob people to this very day in Indonesia with government gangs, notably a Hitler Youth-style organization of jack-booted youth. These ruthless imbeciles brag about how they rob people first of their dignity, then of their lives. And of course, most Americans are going to look at this film and think, this could never happen here. But we already have an army of imbeciles that rob us of our dignity when we travel. The TSA and our government just bought three and a half million rounds of ammo for them. Enough to equip this emerging domestic army with the capability for each of them to fire 9,400 bullets each day for a year. But there's a direct American connection to this Indonesian democide. Barack Obama has deep roots that go back to this very time, this violence and this repression. His mother married his stepfather, Lolo Sotero, who was from Indonesia, and returned to Indonesia to work for this same government. His mother, ostensibly an anthropologist, worked for USAID in Indonesia, a well-known CIA front corporation. Even without these Indonesian government and CIA connections, Obama spent his formative years in a country ruled by a ruthless and repressive regime that ruled with an iron fist. Is it any wonder that Obama has signed the NDAA, which allows the military to arrest and indefinitely detain without trial anyone that they label as a communist? Oh, I mean, uh, a terrorist. That's the term in vogue today. And is it any wonder that Obama commits mass murder by drone strikes, even killing Americans without trial? Watch the act of killing. Is playing right now in a movie theater near you and in a government that is ruling over you. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. To watch even more politically charged movies, become a member of Prison Planet TV. Your subscription will allow you to get access to all the movies, the documentaries, the rants, and your subscription can be shared with up to 10 other people. Support this transmission and sign up today. Now stick around because coming up, Jakari Jackson is going to be interviewing Kale Sampson. His raps will deliver a New World Order message to the masses. We'll be right back. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Kale Simpson. He's a hip hop artist and the original concept of hip hop, being conscious of your surroundings and presenting that in a very positive way. Not all this crap, look at my chain, look at all these girlfriends I don't really have. He's a real true hip hop artist and he's here to promote his new album, The Big Picture. He joins us now via video Skype. Thanks for joining us, Kale. Thanks for having me on, Jakari. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you. Now, we got your album. You sent us some albums here at the Info War. We definitely appreciate that. A lot of guys have been enjoying them. I've been enjoying the album myself. Can you tell us a little bit about this album and also how you got into music? Um, okay, well, I'll start with how I got into music. Um, I originally got influenced by hip-hop culture probably when I was about nine years old. Uh, at the time, I was living in the West End of Toronto, and uh, I remember to get into my apartment every day, which was on the 12th floor, I would have to walk by this group of older dudes that would always be freestyling and ciphering in the lobby. And because I took an interest in what they were doing, um, they kind of took me under their wing and gave me a bunch of tapes to listen to. 
And uh, some of the tapes that they gave me just so happened to be of some of the original great MCs. So right off the bat, I was listening to guys like KRS-One and NWA and Chuck D from Public Enemy at like age nine. Um, so, you know, these guys, they weren't talking about meaningless entertainment or mindless subject matter. They were talking about like real life social injustices that were occurring that the mainstream media wasn't reporting on. And they were providing the listeners with like real life street level commentary based on their experience through the music. So that was the original sort of hip hop spirit that uh, spoke to me and that has always inspired me. And when you consider that the world's even crazier than it was back then, that's the same sort of gusto and attitude that I feel people need and that are looking for. So that's the type of music that I'm trying to do now. Um, and then in terms of the big picture, the, the album that I just released, um, I started writing this probably about three years ago. And, um, you know, I was basically just very uninspired by a lot of the sort of fluffy, gutless music that I was hearing on the radio and seeing on MTV. And, uh, you know, I felt that it was very detached from the reality of, you know, what's going on in the world. So I wanted to um, make music that more accurately reflected our time. So, you know, I started watching documentaries and going to websites like Infowars.com. And, you know, uh, I ended up writing a song called Reach Up, which I recently released a video for. That was the first song off of the big picture. And, um, and uh, you know, that it sort of talks about a variety of issues like economic inequality, government corruption, basically everything. It's a, sort of a summary of where my album would go, the big picture. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, we released that. And I just kind of feel like the times has come where people want um, somewhat of a breath of fresh air, so to speak. So I'm hoping that my new album will be able to provide people with that. Yes, could we see, you know, what you call the fluffy music, all the soulless dribble uh, that's perpetuated by the mainstream media that's usually out there. You know, we have videos of uh, suicides and sell your soul to the devil and all these uh, demonic symbols and the music now of the days, you know. So what do you think about that? You know, what do you think about the media? I know you're in Canada, maybe you guys have a little bit of different uh, influence as far as artists, but you know, when you look at the mainstream and you see the mainstream artists, what do you think about that? Um, well, I mean, our media is more or less the same as yours. You know, uh, the Canadian um, media is basically the American media. There's slight differences and whatnot. So when I look at the mainstream artists, I'm you know, for the most part, I'm not really impressed. Uh, it, they don't really speak to me. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't feel like uh, they, the, the, the gusto and the spirit of the human experience is being accurately portrayed through the pop star uh, artists that are being promoted uh, to the public. So, you know, I feel the opposite. I feel like, uh, I feel, um, kind of a sense to, to dig into information. Like, uh, you know, I kind of view my, my music as information oriented, almost like essays, uh, you know, cause I'm driven by just getting the message out there. You know, I'm not, I don't care about money. I don't care about all the superficial stuff. I don't care about uh, being popular, being cool, but I do happen to have uh, an inquiring mind. And I do happen to have this ability to rap that I've had since I was young. And for whatever reason, people do seem to think it's uh, cool or they respect it, especially younger people. So really, I'm just trying to use my medium to help contribute and to try to help towards making, the, uh, making a positive difference. And how I do that is by spreading information through my lyrics to hopefully uh, increase awareness about some of these real issues that are affecting us all and hopefully provoking thought and inspiring other people to start taking action in their own ways so that collectively we can start to get some positive social change happening. That's very well said because, you know, a lot of people, they, they see the fight, they think it's all about being on the radio like Alex or, you know, sitting up here in a suit. You know, it's not all about that. It's about, you know, people doing what they can do. You know, maybe your thing isn't being on the radio or maybe not, you know, so much presenting the news, but you can make a rap song. You can make this or that. People have paintings. I mean, all types of ways to get the message out that's not just sitting in a suit on TV. So I'm very glad that you mentioned that. And I want you to say, you know, some inspirational words to somebody who may be watching this. And, you know, maybe their thing isn't music. Maybe their thing isn't doing a news show. But, you know, how can you tell people to, you know, get the inspiration inside of themselves to go out there and do what they need to do to get this message across? I mean, I would just encourage anyone out there who is awake and who's aware of this information to 
whatever your medium is, to not be afraid to stand up, not be afraid to speak out. Um, you know, I know sometimes it all can feel a little bit insurmountable, like you're just a speck of sand on a beach, but the reality is that you can make a big difference on a personal level. The status quo is shifting. There's more and more people waking up every day and there's more and more people awake right now. So I have a lot of hope in humanity. I have a lot of faith that collectively we can all use our different mediums uh, to make a huge difference. Um, you know, so I would just encourage everyone to not be afraid. Uh, find the creativity within yourself and go for it. Now, there are a lot of issues, Kale, and we have a very short time. But, you know, what do you think is a real important issue, you know, not just in the United States, but around the world today? You know, what is your top priority? Uh, man, there's so many different issues. Um, and, you know, you can look at each issue separately. And um, sometimes I think, like, it's, it's better to get a general scope of everything, if you can, and be able to connect the dots so that you can start to see all these separate issues as... Um, see how they're all connected and interrelated so that you get a bigger picture view of what's actually going on and how the world is being run. And the way that the world is, you know, being run is essentially um, we're being controlled. And a lot, one of the main reasons that we're being controlled uh, through is through the economic system. You know, in the United States, you guys have the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. in, in Canada, we've got, uh, you know, uh, the government borrows money from private banks at interest, which enslaves the, the nation and puts them in debt, which affects us all. So I would say understanding the money system, if I was going to uh, pick a specific uh, incident or issue, I would say understanding the money system would be uh, one of the top priorities for me. That's why I wrote a song at the, at the end of my album called The Money Song. Right. You know, it's a very good, informative song, and that's what we need. You know, more positive music, people like uh, people like Kale Sampson, people like Denali, who entered the Operation Paul Revere contest, people like Steve Grant, Immortal Technique, conscious rap, you know, a rap with a message, not just look at my chain or look at my cars and all these things that they, they, they got on loan anyway, the record company lets them borrow it. So, Kale, tell us how we can get a hold of your music. Um, if you want to learn more about me and my music, you can go to my website, kalesampson.com. Feel free to add me on Twitter, at kale underscore Sampson. Uh, make sure to look out for the video that I just released. It's the lead single for my album. It's called Reach Up, which is on YouTube. It's been getting a lot of uh, tens of thousands of views, actually, in the past few weeks, which is great. Um, and just look out for my album, The Big Picture, which is coming out on September the 3rd on iTunes. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. And if we have to, we can cut it out. But can you bust a freestyle? Um, I can bust something, probably. Um, throughout our whole lives, we've been made to believe that we're just little people who are powerless and weak, that we're insignificant in the higher scheme of things. But it's a lie. The opposite is reality. So don't believe the false history we've been taught. It's time to talk to our neighbors and turn the television off. Take responsibility for your actions and thoughts and realize the true potential that you've got. Because once you understand the way that energy works, you'll feel connected to each other and the earth. Then you'll listen to your heart when it's speaking to you and start to do the right thing. In all that you do, our collective consciousness has to decide to be in a state of love and no longer comply. So we're fully empowered. Let's step away from the fear and start to lead by example. The revolution is here. There you go. And that's the best commercial. That's the best plug you can do right there. Kale Sampson, kalesampson.com. Thank you for your time. Thanks a lot, Jakari. All right. And if you'd like to learn more about how hip-hop is really supposed to be, stop by the InfoWars store and pick up the Professor Griff book special. You can see them all right there. Three great books, Acapella Revolution, Analytics, and The Psychological Covert War on Hip-Hop, all available at the InfoWars shop. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you next time. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.